rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which like, it stands, which stands one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Um, item number three. Uh, is uh, to hear and consider an act upon the request from the first select woman of superintendent of schools for a special appropriation the amount of five million one hundred twenty three nine twenty eight for the cost of purchasing land and existing buildings to operate the Walter Fitzgerald High School campus moving costs improvements related thereto and authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance as such as appropriation. Um, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Um, okay, so we did have the presentation last week and um, the presentation portion, so I would just then open it up for questions. I know you received some additional documents um, that you potentially may have to want to talk about uh, during the meeting, so I'll just open it up. Yeah, can, can you let us know? Thank you. Um, can uh, Angelus, Mr. Papa George, if you wouldn't mind just telling us, I've just opened it, but what is it that we're looking at that you just sent us? Uh, what, what you're looking at is just a summary. It took that last spreadsheet we gave with the utilities and the costs and everything. This just pulled that, kind of pulled that information to give you, together and gave you some totals as opposed to trying to hunt through to figure out totals on comparison. And, but what we're looking at is $200,000 additional carrying costs from one property to the next? That's the uh, annual cost, yes, difference with the bonding insurance and everything included in it. To be fair, I want to say that I personally think it's apples and oranges, so you may be spending more, but what we are getting is such a significant increase that, you know, it's not a dollar for dollar straight comparison in my opinion. All right. Um, can I can I chime in here on right a couple ahead. items? Cool. Let's go to let's go to this schedule that another schedule that you forwarded called Giant Steps Closing and Additional Costs. Can we go to that one? Yep. I'm just pulling it right up. Sure. I appreciate it. Tell me when you're there. The name of it was, I'm sorry. Giant Steps Closing and Additional Costs. Okay. I believe I have the correct one here. Okay. All right. So the first column is labeled one-time amount, the 75573. How is that being funded? Oh, I'm sorry. I think you're looking at the town's paper. Mr. Flynn, that's a... This is Jared. That was the time. I don't know who put it together yet. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Speak louder. We're uh, we're funding this through the uh, through various accounts of the uh, of the budget this year, and the okay. So these are operating costs. Except for the tax settlement is just a loss of revenue. Yeah, explain that to us. They owe us that amount of money, so you're foregoing that as part of the acquisition? Well, if they, they paid that amount, that's a refund. That's going to be a tax refund. Okay, so they've already paid that, and we're paying that back to Giant Steps as part of this. Is that right? That's correct. And why are we paying it back? Was that paid in advance? That was part of the, it was part of the overall agreement, the acquisition agreement. So it was factored into the overall cost of the agreement. I don't know what that, what does that mean? It was factored in. As part of the, uh, as part of the cost of the property and what we were, what we were contributing for it. 
So wouldn't I mean, okay, so they paid that in real estate taxes to us previously for the period that they owned the building. Is that a correct statement? That's correct. And they had a um they had filed to uh to not pay that. Uh, they had filed an appeal to not pay that amount because there were some uh they believed that that they didn't know it. So the actual cost to this is the purchase price plus that amount of money. Hi, I'm sorry. This is uh, this is Attorney Baldwin. Uh, Tom, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I had myself double muted. I only unmuted once. If I can explain for uh, for the board what this is, um, that yeah, property that property has always gone. Uh, untaxed. It's always been considered exempt um, for uh, being uh, operating a school, whether it was the giant right. step school or whether it was the uh, the diocese schools that were there before. That so the property has never been taxed until uh, a recent assessment by uh, Mr. Murray, where he carved out part of the property and considered it to be taxable. Um, it was agreed. Uh, as part of the consideration that uh, we would um, we, we would resolve that issue, especially considering uh, the town has resolved similar uh, properties in the town of Fairfield relating to other uh, schools in town that had never been taxed before. So uh, we're, we're applying a consistent uh, policy uh, with respect to uh, giant steps. It just hadn't come to uh, the point of of being heard by the court yet. In fact, there is a pretrial scheduled in January um, to, to address the situation. But that that's how it came about. I Got it. Now the that. rest of thank you. The rest of the costs in this column, I'm assuming, are pretty much already sunk in costs. Is that correct? Yes, I would. Say, you mean you mean the costs have already by something cost? You mean the costs have already been incurred? Correct. Yeah. If we were to walk Sorry, away, correct. most of this has already been incurred. Correct. Uh, looking through these, Boston O'Neill, yes, estimated title fees. Well, the the, the if I may say, uh, this is a this is a Jim Baldwin again. The uh, the tax settlement is contingent upon the transaction, so technically no, but. For all purposes. Well, no, I understand yeah. that part, Jim. I was talking about the rest of it. Okay. The yeah, I said the rest of them in the column. Yeah. The estimated title fees that would occur at closing. So these are basically that one's basically a closing cost. The phase one environmental assessment has been done. Um, the building materials inspection has been done. And the estimated legal fees, um, maybe Mr. Baldwin can talk to that. I think those are closing costs. Those, those are, for the most part, closing costs, yes. But a lot of those, a lot of the title fees and all that, isn't that work already undergoing or no? No, the, the, the title is not done okay. until this proof, the title search and the insurance Got it. Board. Let me. I appreciate that then. Thank you. Mr. Papa George, can we go to the schedule that you just forwarded then? Yes, I have it right here. All right, cool. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll call in and, and thank you for making it more complete than the other one. Greatly appreciate that. Um, so it's 366000 per year versus 143000 per year. Um, however, out of this, we also include the bond costs, which is our cost of owning the building as opposed to um, renting the building. So if I was to take that 309 out, the cost would be about half as much uh, to run the building um, than it is presently um, if we were to lease it and have to incur the expense. Is that correct? And that's largely because of the lease. That's kind of the uh, way I'm reading this. Correct? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm I'm assuming, and I shouldn't, that your numbers, your math is correct. I'm trying to do it right now on my little calculator, but that sounds about accurate. 
question for you. If we were to keep the current facility, the Byro Street, my understanding is there'd be additional funds that would need to be spent to bring it up to to snuff because it's in quite poor shape right now. Is that fair to say? Um, so if we were to keep Byro Street, a couple of things come into play there. The Bridgeport Archdiocese yeah. is looking to sell the building. So the first step would be we'd have to acquire the building. And then the second part of that is we, um, we walk the building with Colliers, who does our a lot of our school construction owner's representation. Yeah. And um, just without opening up walls and there's a lot of unforeseens, they put a number on that building of approximately 10.295 million to bring it up to code and compliance and as a health and safety standard that we would want to bring it to. So it's double the cost to not even buy it. It's double the cost to just take it and renovate it and bring it up to code and et cetera. And then there'd be the in, then there'd be the cost of acquiring it. Is that correct? That's the way I should sure. look at it. That is absolutely correct. So, do you know what the price they're trying to charge for that building is? I do not. We originally had a conversation at one point, and it was before they were actively looking for buyers, and it was between two and three million was what they were talking to us about. Right. So in terms of the bonding costs and that, you're looking at probably if we were to buy that building, you're looking at $700,000 worth of bonding costs per year or so. I'm doing cocktail napkin math compared to 300000 for the one that we're looking at. So you really, it's more expensive to do the Byro Street operation. And if they sell it and we don't buy it, we're going to be forced to get out of there in a year and change anyway. Is that correct? Correct. Our our ex, our current lease was only a one-year extension, so we have to be out by June. End of June. June 30th is our end of lease. I mean, we could probably negotiate and redo a lease, but I'd like to just remind everyone also that when we did the current year extension, one of the conditions that the Bridgeport Archdiocese put in there was that we had to take over the maintenance and everyday operations of the building to keep the school in there safely, as opposed to calling the landlord if we have a roof leak or something of that nature. Because of their intent to sell, they didn't want to put money into a building they're selling. Right. Had we explored, and I'm just asking the question because it's a logical question to ask, had we to explore that if if uh, the current uh, school hadn't become available, we didn't want to buy Byro Street because it was going to be, you know, $14 million all in to renovate and to own the property. Um, had we explored other options as to where we would put the, the programs um, in the event that neither of these two came to fruition? I know that from a facility standpoint, we've looked at, multiple options throughout the town. I believe the superintendent, Mr. Cummings, can also talk about looking in-house for optimum space if it was available. But I know we did we did pursue every and all avenues possible for an external facility. Okay. And what did we, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oh. Cummings, could you just speak to that just so we have eyes dotted, T's crossed here? Absolutely, Mr. Flynn. Um, yes, we did. We looked at, as Mr. Papa George said, we looked at other available properties in town. We did look at uh, some space utilization possibilities within the district. Um, they would have required a minimum some additions, a potential addition to a building. Um, but also we, what we were confronted with was the, um, what I would call the viability of placing that program in. If we were going to place it in an existing building, um, our options were relatively limited to either the middle schools or high schools um, just because of the age of the students that attend the Walter Fitzgerald campus. So options were very limited. And they've been explored and they were not great options. Is that right? I'm not that is correct. To lead the witness. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That, that's my, that was what I was trying to imply yeah, or say. Yes, it, they were just really dead ends at each turn. Plus, I think the addition of what the potential use of the space outside of the, the school year for the uh, for the new place, for the giant step space, presents so many opportunities for the school system, revenue generating and otherwise. So 
So now you're leading the witness there, Nancy. I just wanted to <laughs> add my two cents when, when possible. Right, Mr. Cummings? Right. Yeah, I was only answering the question I was asked, but sure, you can elaborate. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I'm on your side here on this one. I appreciate it. I, can I jump in with All a couple right. of questions? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sure, let me, let me if I could wrap up what I was trying to. So, okay. So the costs here as portrayed, right, are the full bonding costs of this piece of property as compared to the leasing costs of the existing piece of property at which that situation is going to change in the next year or so with a sale and the need to upgrade uh, that building. And arguably that's going to be uh, much more expensive to the tune of uh, seven or eight million dollars more uh, should we go in that direction. Other viable options around town were looked at and excluded. Um, largely because they didn't fit the needs of the program. Is that fair? That is, yes. All right. In addition to that, by buying this at the lower costs than doing the, the Byro Street acquisition, we get access and the opportunity afforded by that second building and by the piece of property in general. And that second building, we have yet to determine what can be done with that second building, whether it'll be used for town operations or perhaps I heard someone say maybe to house either the ECC in the future or the Board of Education offices, fair to say? Don't all jump in at once. Is that fair to say? I'll jump in. Uh, Christine Vitale, Chair of the Board of Ed. Um, yeah, so from the school district's point of view, those we discussed a number of options. A, another location for the ECC was definitely at the top of the list, possibly com combining that with central office. But we really did not get very far down that road, um, partially due to COVID and wanting to see if we could acquire the property first. Some other options that were put out there, potentially ECC in the senior center, if we want to do something with the town. There was some discussion about if the building was demolished, could it possibly be used as for fields and field space to supplement the high school and possibly parks and rec, you know, um, in off school hours. But again, just some discussion points, some brainstorming, nothing really further than that. But this preserves those opportunities, and I understand that. I just wanted that stated on the record. And I don't know whether Mrs. Kupchick had something to say. My apologies. I didn't mean to cut her off. No, I was just uh, responding to this, that those are a lot of things we addressed last week uh, during the presentation. Um, that we uh, obviously wanted to jump on this because we felt it was a very good deal as opposed to the property on Barrow Street. And also the fact that it had the, uh, a lot of possibilities open to it for us as a town and also for the uh, central office administration. So overall, do I, we, I think. Yeah, do we have any time frame for any of that or not yet? Like in terms no, of when we no. would make decisions on that? No, no. You know, we want to just get this property uh, purchased before someone else gets it. Um, and then we'll make decisions as a community. We're going to have to definitely do some research for that before we have the answers um, for everybody to look at things in a holistic way and have all the details. Definitely need a lot more detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, from a financial perspective in looking at it, it makes a lot of sense from the standpoint uh, versus the other options that are available to us. And the fact that it pres preserves the options available to use that property for some of the needs we have. Uh, it also stops that property from falling into the hands of a developer that could overbuild that space and overburden um, the infrastructure and the schools in that area. Um, we should also be able to get this at some significantly low uh, bonding costs, given the timing of this. So uh, I think it's a good idea, and I support it. So I thank I you for the analysis. <laughs> it's a very good idea, and I, I was really happy that um, that the district, um, you know, pushed on this, um, and that we worked together, uh, the chairwoman and the superintendent and uh, Angelus, you know, that we worked together and the town attorney, put this together 
you know, relatively quickly. It seemed like a no-brainer after the price was reduced from the original cost that they had first proposed. It just seemed like such a good deal for us. And to finally have a nice, um, you know, permanent space for Alternative High School, I mean, as you know, that space they've been in is, is a substandard space. Uh, and it was not a space I was feeling very excited to purchase if that's the road the school district had wanted us to go down. Because frankly, it's, it's, it's not a good space. It's not a great property. It's a, the building was lousy and it needed a lot of work. And so I think this is much better and it just gives so many uh, more opportunities for us, the town, uh, to obviously uh, come up with some creative solutions. And, and, and the big thing was right at the top of my mind was to keep it from development, which we know is a real problem in town. So um, if I could jump in more, the project has my support, but more um, quest curiosity questions. Um, two big line items minus the bond costs I see are electric. Um, there have been so many great savings for, uh, that sustainability, the sustainable group in Fairfield has pointed out that um, we've been able to find at Bowman, et cetera. Is that something that has been considered here? Is the, it's a residential area, is natural gas plugged into that area in town, uh, solar panels, any of that been thought about as you're looking to develop out the space? That's the first thing. Second question, which is again, more of a curiosity. It's about 11 acres. Um, the landscaping number is high. My recollection is that some of it was wooded area. Um, is the 11 acres what we see with, between the two buildings? Is it so high just because it's 11 acres and that's what it costs to maintain? Or is there something unforeseen that is driving that price of $6,000, which may not be high compar in comparison? I'm just curious. So just those two questions. So or I can speak to the landscaping first. The, the landscaping is based on the schedule that we use for all the buildings for cuttings and mowings and based on the size of the property. We actually had our landscapers come out and look at it and give us the actual numbers based on the town bid. Um, the second one I can speak partially to, um, we haven't really looked into from the school side of sustainable resources such as solar panels or anything of that nature. As of yet, we wanted to secure the property first. It would be something we would definitely consider once the school and the property has been moved over there. Um, the, the roof on the school itself is uh, part of it's from 2013, the other parts from 2017. So they're not really that old. So it is something we could really consider doing a roof, rooftop solar system on. Great, I would just be my hope, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this sentiment, uh, to really think about all the ways in which we might upgrade uh, for sustainable, smarter, uh, more ecological approach to, to maintaining the building and it would, provide some cost savings in the long term. And then natural gas, obviously, if if it is in the area and, and there are the lines for it, I would hope that someone would look into that. Yeah, it is a natural have, gas run building. Okay, great. So I have no other questions except to say, I, I do know that there was someone who was interested in public comment who reached out to us for support. So um, I would just hope that we could hear from, from her. Well, if, uh, thank you, Nancy. I was just going to get to that. Um, if there's no other comments from the board, seeing none, I'll open up to public comment. And we did have someone reach out this morning. Uh, Carrie, are you on the line? Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Wonderful. I just want to comment. Thank you so much for taking um, public comment. Um, I am completely ecstatic and impressed with this work that our town is doing. Um, as a parent um, to a 12-year-old with special needs um, who may ultimately benefit from this high school, this is for our kids. This is an investment in our children and in our kids' future. Kids, um, I think we're all on the same page about how kids can, children can really benefit from this type of environment for certain um, children. And um, it really sounds like it also makes financial sense. So um, just thank you for all the work you're doing to make this happen. I'm also a resident of Southport um, and um, really appreciate that this will, will not be an overdeveloped property. Um, I live within walking distance of um, Giant Steps. It was really quite a loss to the community 
um, when that school closed. Um, and it's, it's really wonderful um, to see the town moving on this and making such a, a solid investment in the town's future. So thank you. Well, thank you, Carrie. Um, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to share that with the board and for your support. Well, thank you for hearing me. Thanks, Carrie. So with, there's no further uh, discussion um, from the board. I'll bring it back to the board. Uh, I just want to thank you, uh, Tom and Nancy, uh, to you both for your uh, support for this project. I think it is going to be a, uh, a, a really valuable asset for our community, and I do appreciate both of your support. Proud to be able to do so. Okay, um, so if we have no further uh, discussion or um, comment, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Tom? Sorry, I was on mute. Aye. Okay, uh, motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, everyone. We're, we're almost there. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your support. Thank you very much. All right. Well, um, we got our next item four, I would say that our central office people can sign off. I'm sure, you, I'm sure that good really day. makes you very sad. <laughs> All right. Take care. Have a good afternoon. Item number four. Um, this item was uh, held uh, from the 12-7 Board of Selectmen meeting to hear, consider, and authorize the purchasing authority to enter into the proposed contract with Bench Strength Partners for services related uh, to the negotiation of lease agreements for the use of space on Fairfield, Town of Fairfield property for the placement of cellular antennas and related equipment. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, well, I'll let our uh, Chief Financial Officer take it from here. Hi, everybody. So during the last meeting, you asked uh, three questions that I submitted some backup information on. Uh, one of them was about the um, putting this, the possibility of putting these out to bid to other wireless carriers so that they could uh, hopefully get into a competition and maybe drive up the price a little bit so that we could get additional rent from that. There was another question about uh, which wireless carriers are on the on each of the cell towers. And then the, the other question was regarding the uh, other consultants that we explored as possibilities for this contract. And so I provide answers. Would you like me to go through each one of them? Yeah, quickly? please do quickly. Sure. Okay, so when I, I talked to the uh, to Bench Strength Partners, one of the representatives, about the first question regarding the option to put this out to bid, uh, his, his comment was that they, they're not really responsive to solicitation, they being the wireless companies. Uh, they, have, they use engineers uh, to, to figure out where they want to put towers and they know where they want to put them and they're very precise in which locations they want, where they want to put them. And so, uh, you know, I, I guess in short, they know their needs uh, and they don't usually respond when there are uh, when there are solicitations to them. And he gave me a, a couple of examples. Uh, you know, one of them was in in a valley, uh, I believe, in the in the uh, uh, Connecticut. So it was in the state of Connecticut, uh, in one of the river valleys, um, where town had asked uh, for a bid on on one of their towers to go out and bid on one of the towers for wireless carriers and. It was just they. Nobody was nobody was willing to respond because they they know that there wasn't demand there and that it, the wireless carriers didn't have the need to go there. And so I also I followed up and asked them if well what if there was a coincidence of uh, you know us having this this space available and then maybe there's a a, a carrier who does want to get on it. And he said they would already know that, and they would have, they would have already contacted us to uh, to get placed on that tower. 
So, I, does any you uh, does anyone have any questions on that one? Um. So they're basically saying the cell towers approach us, we don't approach them. They know where the opportunities are, and should they want them, they'll come to us. That's, that's a great way to put it, yes. Okay, let's go to the next one then, if you don't mind. The next question? Sure. So the next one was about which wireless carriers were on the uh, on each of the towers that we have. And so you can see the list there. Uh, that, so there are three of them. We have three cell towers that are on town property. One is at the fire station at 3965 Congress Street, and they have four wireless carriers there. Uh, and you can see the, the list of them, T-Mobile, uh, Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon. Yeah. Another tower at, at the police station at 100 Reef Road, and there are three wireless carriers there. Uh, three who are the same as on the other tower. Minus one. Uh, and then there's a windmill on Bronson Road uh, that has Sprint on it right now. How? When is the Sprint one up? The Sprint one is uh, good question. Um, yeah, I would have to look at that one and find out what the uh, what the expiration of that that one is. I, Jared, I guess what my question is in looking at the remaining terms, why is this whole concept even an issue now, given that these terms of these leases, unless Sprint is due right now, they're going on for decades or a decade at minimum. So I don't understand what the why this is becoming an issue right now anyway so it's an issue because when uh, when i started out during the last meeting one of the things i mentioned was that when i came in uh into the yep. position i was getting i was getting some mailing some offers from the wireless carriers who want to update upgrade their the equipment that's on their uh that's on our towers and so that opens up when they do that and they offer us more additional money that opens up the opportunity to uh, to negotiate further. For Got it. To, so this so is all about them upgrading the stuff that's on the towers, and then they get to then by definition it gets reopened. I understand now. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, go right ahead to item number three for me, unless anybody else has any questions. You've got it covered. Okay. Okay, go ahead. The last, Jen. One, last one had to do with uh, other consulting firms that we looked at as uh, possibilities for this contract, and uh, I included a list. There are there are a number of them, and they range uh, just in terms of I, in my mind, in terms of their legitimacy, and also in terms of their uh, being able to meet the need of what we were looking for, and so. Uh, there were six six of them that I looked at that did, I, I think did not meet our need and were rejected for also for other reasons because they uh, they're not local and so they may not understand the market. Uh, they do they did not have uh, any kind of focus or any in some cases any experience working with municipalities. Uh, and then some of them were, uh, you know, didn't have a good structure in place or had no structure in place for a uh, an agreement that was based on them, based on their performance and compensating them based on performance. And to me, that was a that was important because I I want them to work hard um, to get and have the incentive to make as much money for themselves, so it translates into more money for us. Now, thank you. Now, to your earlier comment about the cell towers coming in proactively and not kind of reactively coming at us and stuff like that, do we know whether any cell tower companies have approached us to put in cell towers and any other town properties right now? I know of one right now. 
And uh, would that fall under the auspices of this agreement, or how does that work? So it, it would uh, if we if we wanted to, and if we wanted to pursue it, uh, BSP would be the benchmark partners would be the uh, the consultant and would be our representative to negotiate that deal. Right, but the whole thing about whether we want to or not is all up for conjecture at this time. It comes before us and and other town bodies, I would imagine. Is that fair to say? That's that's right, and you know whether or not there, uh, you know whether or not it's something in. You know, I think we have to consider whether or not it's in keeping with the character of the location of the. Of course. Where they want of course. To yep. Of course, I just wanted in to know the answer to that. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you for the follow-up. You're welcome. Are there any I, further discuss questions? I don't have any, thank you. Okay, um, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. And can I get a motion, uh, item number five, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening.